But if we talk about where the markets are in terms of historically, Ben, uh, Sydney is at its peak. Brisbane, Adelaide and Perth are at their peaks. Um, Melbourne's peak was back in March of 22, so that's off 5.1%. Um, Hobart also back in March uh, 22, and that's off 12.5%. Uh, Darwin's peak was some time ago, Ben, a decade ago, uh, and that's at 6%. You have, a, have that as a smoky. And Canberra, um, a couple of months after the other two um, cities' peak was in, in May of 22, and that's off 6.5%. But there's some... Uh, you want to talk us through the regionals, Ben? Yeah, so in terms of New South Wales regional, we're seeing that uh, its peak was in May of 22. It's off 2.8%. Regional Victoria, to Bryce's point earlier, it had a wonderful run, uh, which finished in May of 2022, and that's now off 8.4%. Regional Queensland is setting its new peak. South Australia is setting its new peak. Western Australia is setting its new peak. Um, and regional Tassie is off 4 uh, again, it also peaked in May of 2022. So we can see there that, you know, this is, you know, and to our point, we were, you know, if you fast, if you go back, wind back 18 months ago, we were concerned about the Hobart market and we thought it overshot itself. Um, and that's corrected itself by 12.5%. Um, it's interesting around the investor sentiment for Melbourne is actually quite positive because everyone thinks it's affordable. Uh, but on the other side of it, you know, they're concerned about government interventions and the regulations and the, the taxes that are being charged here in Melbourne, similar to what we say about Canberra. So it's a real dichotomy of what's going on in terms of the, the debate in terms of how Melbourne will play itself out. But that just gives you a pretty good understanding in terms of where we are. And remembering that, you know, if something's hitting its peak and then coming off its peak, then it's usually going to have a lull period for a period of time before it starts to move forward. And then you've got to start to ask yourself, well, what is the, what is the catalyst um, to re-engage that level of demand? And in some cases, it can be uh, government incentives, such as first homeowners grants, um, or some types of tax concessions, which attract new demand to increase supply. Or in other cases, it's just the holding costs coming down. And the biggest lever of all is obviously interest rates, which we'll get to later on as well um, as part of that story. Ben, just the last thing on that, just, uh, there's a reinforcing point there around um, generalised commentary doesn't necessarily tell the biggest picture because the combined capital since uh, the onset of uh, COVID has grown 34.1%, so 226,000. Yeah. But there's such a range because if you go below that headline, <laughs> Melbourne has done 9.9, which is 70,000 since then. Yeah. Um, and then the other end of the spectrum is Perth, which has done 74.6% since COVID, which is 340,000. So there's definitely a tale of different cities. But um, Yeah, and that's that 74 includes a decline of around 22 to 25%, Bryce. So it's recovered that and then grown another 50%. And that, that also bodes well for that whole story about you run a good economy, you attract new people into that market who can afford it. And it's obviously a very high income market over there. And you start to see that, uh, that the price finding its level based on people who are able to afford that. For And then you also, we're going to see shortly about the rental story over there has been also incredible. And that's again, a product of the higher wages that are over in that particular market.